Shalom, shalom, Yashua Allah. I want to start off first things first, giving all praise and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem Rahakadash, which in the Paleo Hebrew tongues, created as the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. And shalom to you, sister, brothers, living is truth. And shalom to the brothers and sisters that's listening and studying to show themselves approved. Shalom. It don't drown me out. So shalom, Yasharala. It's gonna be a little a little movie review over the movie that just came out. I want to say what last Friday called Avatar: The Way of the Water, which is Avatar Two. You made the first, is the second one, and uh, it's a lot of spiritual things in this movie this movie got a, a lot of spiritual overtones that's why i make so much money because it's really a reenactment of something that already has happened here in babylon the great which is north america being colonized by esau edom and this movie is a reputation of that but they just use aliens you know in order not to you know hurt nobody feelings in order to keep it pc but we know who they talking about and the people in this movie, they got they got them like aliens. They call Navi. They represent Israel, the Israelites. And when you watch that movie, you'll see that. And especially the northern tribe like Gad and Reuben, you know, a lot of Native American aspect. So that's really in the whole movie is about like basically like Pocahontas, the first one. You know how Esau came in, whispered in the ear to the woman and got in and they just plow, plow, took it all and they run Babylon the Great. And that's about how this movie is. It's about resources being took. Esau, they called, like, Esau in this movie represents the humans. Which they're played by the Edomites, you will see. And it shows all their natural attributes in their purest form because it's all about the sword. It shows Esau and his military coming to take and conquer another people's, you know, planet, which represents their land, which we can look at it from a spiritual aspect that happened. Take land. And you'll see that in the movie. And I, I love how that, that's the overtone of it right there. So Israel is, is combating Esau's sword because Esau comes to take resources. You know, that's what he seeks to do. And so this movie... What makes it, you know, impactful the scriptures is it shows the unification of the tribes coming together. Like when you look at it, it can show like the northern tribe and the southern tribe coming together to fight a common enemy, which is played out in the scriptures. So this devil, I know he done read the word because all he did was put the word in the movie and use a current event that happened, basically like the colonization of of North America on the, on the natives, which represent Israelites, that happened in real life. So he just playing it out through a movie and he's making a killing off of it. And that's why everybody connected to it, man. Like Esau, you know, Israel, like that movie, you know, it makes a lot of money. I think it's about to touch a billion now worldwide, pretty close. And it ain't even been out that long. So it's about to make a lot of money. A lot of people went to go see that. It was packed. When we went to go see it, we went and seen it in the 3D. Um, I enjoyed the movie. Lots of action. It shows off like a, a little show clicks of Jacob's trouble. You know, a, a great battle with Esau and his sword versus Israel. So good action. It's a good, nice little action movie. And it builds the characters up to the action. So it, it, the pacing was good. The character building was good. And, and the action was good. You know, uh, very visually stunning. That's why I recommend you go watch it in 3D. I mean, it's just get a little, you know, Get on the low little group on or something and, and see it for the low. But in 3D, oh, it's nice. It's nice. So in the movie, like I said, the tribes are coming together to fight Esau and his sword. Because in this movie, you know, they fought in the first movie. In this movie, Esau comes back with more forces. You know, more. He, he comes like round two, which we'll be about to go through. So in this, Esau coming with it and he's seeking to come, to, you know, take it all. And... They have to, you know, they have to band together in order to defeat Esau. And that, that's happening in real life. Let's go get that. Let's show a representation of that in the scriptures. Shalom, 
Let's go to Isaiah 11. And we'll start at 12. Yeah, check it out. This is, this. see, the Lord of hosts has been activated. So Israel, the remnant, the hopefully elect, they're rallying around Yahweh Shai at this time. At this time. So this scripture I'm about to read is happening. This is Isaiah 11 and 12. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. And notice he used two groups because he didn't have to say Judah, he said Israel because Judah is a part of Israel. But he said Israel and the dispersed of Judah. And really, he said it like that because that's going into the northern tribe and the southern tribe. They're going to unify. So Yabashah is saying he's gathering up, you know, all the tribes, all 12 of them. He's gathering them up. And they're going to get along again. Ain't going to be no differences. Like when you watch the movie, you'll see like at first they was like, all right, man, y'all from here. Because the Navi was split up and, it, and they was one group. You know, they lived in the in the forest, the trees. And it's another group that is aquatic. That's why the movie is called Way of the Water. They live in the water. You know, they're the same people. They just got, you know, two different styles on how they use the planet Earth, which that goes into Israel. That's how Israel is, you know. Uh, you got 12 flavors, 12 tribes, and they all do something a little different, but they're all the same people, though. And Esau knows that. That's why he wants to attack the so-called African-Americans, the so-called Native Americans, and the so-called Hispanics. Because those three groups of people make up the 12 tribes of Israel. So this is the war on Israel. You'll see it in that movie. You'll see it in that movie. And the trials got to get, they got to click together. They got to get along again in order to combat this, this enemy. So check it out. We just read that, right? Now check out, here go 13, Isaiah eleven thirteen, 13. And the, the envy also of Ephraim shall depart. And the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. Ephraim shall not envy Judah and Judah shall not vex Ephraim. Did you peep that? So it lets you know right there, because the head, the head of the southern tribes is Judah, the head of the northern tribes is Ephraim. So those two right there, like they didn't get along. You see that in the scriptures right there. And that probably that conflict right there led to our earthly kingdom being shattered into two kingdoms. And then ultimately, you know, we know what happened to that. You know, we got jumped on and beaten to slavery. You know, so now we're coming up out of that. And now the trials, you can see that in the brotherhood, are starting to get along again because now we're all rallying behind Yahweh Shah. Like, we're starting to see, like, man, you ain't my enemy. You ain't my enemy. Like, what are we fighting for? And this devil here, you know, he destroying everything. He breaking everything. Putting poison in everything. Why, why are we banging? He's the problem. <laughs> so now we, we all are understanding that because we don't want to court thanks to Yahweh Shah. You know, giving us his eye salve to see. So check it out. Hook on 14. And it says, But they shall fly upon the shoulders of the Philistines toward the west, and they shall spoil them of the east together. They shall lay their hand upon Edom and Moab, and the children of Ammon shall obey them. So that was just like a roll call of enemies right there, because the, the Philistines at the top, those are Hamites. Those are your Africans. You know, and everybody know, like, they the ones that put us, you know, into the, the bonded slavery. They handed us over to Esau. So, man, that's Yahweh Shah calling them out right there. And then when you said, and they shall spoil them from the east together, and they shall lay their hand upon Edom. Woo, that's the number one adversary right there, Esau. And Moab, your Chinese, you know, and the children of Ammon, your Japanese, shall obey them. So that, that's the heathens right there. We about to, hey. About to lay the smack down on them because they all aided this devil, Esau. They all aided Edom and his diabolic plan he about to do on us. They 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 helped this devil, all of them. You know, hell's starting to feel bad, but now, nah, man, you did it. So I like that lineup. I like that scripture right there on 14. So and that, that's why they don't want us to have unity. They don't want Israel to be on one accord. They don't want the natives getting along with the so-called African Americans. They don't want the uh Hispanics getting along with the natives. They don't want Israel unified, but we will be unified because the unification is coming through Yahweh Shah. He has a group of Israelites that he used his word, us prophesying this word, to gather together 
And that's the group that he's going to use, the hopeful elect. That's why he said, now we know what the end sign for the nations was. It's this word, this Bible, because it's the thing that's teaching us about Yahweh Bashar Rashad, using his wisdom, not your understanding. So we're all getting on one accord. That's that new song we're singing. And he's gathering us right now. That's why Esau is so nervous, got to come with the plan, because he's witnessing a gathering of the nations and they're being unified because now we all look into our head coach. You know, we all look into, you know, our owner. We go, Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shah. Now we, you know, know what we need to do. Now we're getting right. We're cleaning our act up. You know, we calling on our power. We know his name again. <laughs> recall. We're getting that total recall. So this book is like a total recall. Or what's that machine they use when uh, your heart stops? Was it a defibrillator? I want to say. Um, anyway, any medical people, y'all can put it in the comment board, but medical people that's listening. But that, that shock thing, they bring you back to life, and they be like, clear, and you know. <laughs> hey, that's what this word is doing for us spiritually. It's like a spiritual shock to the system, a quickening spirit. And now we like, oh, man, hold up. I'm, I'm Israel again. Hold up. I got Yahweh shot. Okay, I'm supposed to be doing this. And now we getting, you know, we getting in order. We getting unified. We we in the house. Now we hearing you. How about you? He getting us ready for this battle that's coming. So it ain't going to hit us just, you know, blindsided. We're not blind. We're in the light. And that's all thanks to the power of you. How about you? For leading each and every of us here to get this truth. Because that's, that's huge. So check it out. And then for a quick edification's sake, for the new people if you don't know who Ephraim is you know we can go to numbers let's go to numbers 26 28 if you don't know who Ephraim is I'm about to show you because you might not know let's go to numbers 26 and 28 and the sons of Joseph after the families were Manasseh and Ephraim so that's where Ephraim come from and Manasseh because you notice, you, you'll read the 12 gates early, you'll see Dan and Joseph. And then when you lead it at the, the end time gate, it says Manasseh and Ephraim. And that leads to Joseph right there. So that's where them names come in at. And that's who Ephraim is. They come from Joseph. That was Joseph's two sons. You know, so that when you read what we just read in Isaiah, that's where Ephraim come from. That's where he came in at. He's a son, one of the first sons of Joseph. He had two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. And they became part of the gates that brothers will come back into. You know, sisters, children. You know, those are two more gates right there that opened up. That was a powerful moment when that happened. You know, I advise you to go to Genesis, read on that. But we're going to stay on point on this, on the movie and what you were seeing in the movie. Because you were seeing two tribes unifying herself in order to you know fight for survival for their kingdom because Esau came in that movie to take the kingdom from them basically the land you know and that's what we dealing with right now Esau about he he got it but he wanted to like exterminate Yashrael Israel like Esau on an extermination mission right now that's what he doing so let's go to Revelation and he won't prevail either. His word says we're going to win. And in the movie, they won. You know, they showed that. <laughs> Let's go to Revelation 11 and 3. Because we're going to talk about the two witnesses. And let's talk about the northern and the southern. And you've seen that in the movie. Check it out, this Revelation 11 and 3. And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy 1,203 square days, clothed in sackcloth. So we go out there wearing them garments, then meet them garments of sackcloth right there. You know, and I got one that's like burlap, real sackcloth. And he said, give us what? Give us power to do what? Prophesy, man. This book is prophecy. As you're reading his prophecies in this book, that it have came into reality and more to come into reality. That's why we know what's about to happen because we know prophecy thanks to Yahweh Shah because he is the spirit of prophecy. So that's what we, when we come in and feeding you with this word, talk about this word, man, that's talking about Yahweh Shah 
and we prophesying. We letting you know, like, Babylon the Great America will be destroyed. And that's the, man, look, check it out. And that precept says, unto my two witnesses, right? Why is that devil mad at them two witnesses? When you a witness, you got what? You got a testimony. So if you go to Revelation 12 and 17, it reads, And a dragon was wroth with the woman, who represents Israel, dragon represents Esau, and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of Yahweh, and have the testimony, going back to the witnesses, the testimony of Yahweh Shahamashiach, which is the wisdom, not the understanding of this book. That's the testimony, because this testifies that Esau is the anti mashiach or anti-Christ, because he's contrary, and he, he goes against everything in the book. And you know the laws. Esau break them all. <laughs> he break every law. So he's the anti. He's the issue. Just like he was the issue in that movie. He was the problem. Like every time show Esau showing up, he was burning up the forest, just like they're doing in real life. <laughs> uh, destroying the animals that you need for the ecosystem. Esau does that in real life for money. You know, you'll see um you'll see his fantasy in that movie, because you'll see uh transhumanism. That's in the movie. You'll see transhumanism, which Esau is working on that day and night right now. You know, that's what that you know, the MOTB is all about. Esau trying to extend his life and, and seek immortality the cheap way. That's in the movie. You will see it. That's why he's about to be destroyed, too, because he's trying to bring that technology into the forefront. And you have a shine about to have that. So he in a race against the clock. So I, I recommend uh, y'all try to go see that. You you know, it'd be money well spent. If you, like I said, get, get the Groupon. Get a sale on it. You know, we always looking to say some change. But but go, it's, it's a good watch. Very good watch. If you ain't got nothing to watch, you know, I know some people can get on their phone. It's a good look through, man. Very spiritual. You'll see a lot of, you know, scriptures and precepts. And you'll just see what, you know, Yashrala go through in the movie. They just depict them, you know, our nation as aliens. Because they don't want to offend nobody. But, you know, us with eyes that can see know who they really talking about in that movie. Oh, uh, you'll see it, too. You'll see the style. You know, you'll hear calls where you like you'll think of the, the northern, the Native American tribe when you hear how they attack. You know, you'll see that. And then you'll see how Esau, you know, how he tried to swindle and get down in order to take resources, and get rich. And you know, they talk about they put it full on display. So I'm looking at Esau like, boy, you put that movie out like that? Because I know it's it's very similar to the Black Panther movie that just came out. Like, that's two movies I've seen back to back, you know, close months that have showed the Northern and Southern tribe coming together. So it's like, I'm like, Esau, you, what, what are you doing? You, but see, the Lord is in everything. That's how I know, that's how we know. Yeah, how about y'all shot runs the show, y'all Shrala, because this, he's making this devil put things in his movies that he know he needs to do to sell. Because both those movies made big time money. But, you know, it, it shows him in a bad light. You know, it shows his nature if you got eyes that can see and if you aware to that opened up. Like it's showing off Black Panther. Like they got mad about Black Adam. You know, they, they dropped the rock from Warner Brothers. Like, nah, you ain't doing that no more. I think they figured out what they did after they did it. And everything's been real spiritual. Like these movies have been like the, a few of them, you know, every now and then come out. And just, I know that Esau has to talk about the word in order to make a compelling movie. He has to put the scriptures in there. Because those make the best movies. And he got to go for it in order to, you know, try to, you know, uh, put in life in his, what's that, the theater sector, the theater type of money, that that pot, Hollywood, yeah, to keep Hollywood going. They, they got to put them type of movies out to get the money going. Because that, that, like I said, the Avatar movie, Avatar 2 movie, they made a lot of money. Because it's a good movie. It's a real good movie. He, Esau had to go spiritual on it. I know he didn't want to, but he had to. So I, you have a shot doing these devils. He's making them have to talk about our story and put it in everything. So now the gospel, man, the spirit is just hitting Esau in the face, man. The spirit of have a shot, but it, it's so overwhelming. And that's why all these brothers putting this word out. Everybody helping out. It's just the whole body. How about shower shot is radiating that power out 
And this devil ain't got no choice but just to bend to the will. And that's a beautiful thing to see, y'all, Sharala. So with that, I didn't mean to be too long. Um, good movie to check out. I highly recommend it. Very good movie. Very spiritual aspect. Uh, get you ready for like, you know, look and see Jacob's trouble because that's that war. You know, it's going to be like that times one million, <laughs> you know. So, man, stay prayed up, y'all, Sharala. Stay prayed up. I want to say detail Baba Bob, Kwan Yashar Allah, and Shalom.